Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. Today I've got a really interesting watch for you. This watch I'm actually quite excited by given the features and the conclusion of the watch which we'll get to at the end of the episode. But this is the Citizen CB0168-08E. It's one of four watches that are essentially the same watch, just in different color configurations. Two of them have this leather band in different colors. The other two are the steel bracelets, also with different color schemes. Uh, just a quick word on these because this review, for the most part, can apply to all four watches. I just want to name those watches right now and show you what they look like. I don't want people to get too hung up on this particular version of the color scheme, I kind of went out on a limb here and got the most absurd one for my own personal reasons, but I don't want that to turn you off in case you're looking for a more traditional watch. So the sisters and brothers of this watch are the black and silver with a black leather band. That is the CB0160-00E. I'm, I'm just gonna put them on the screen as I talk about them so you can kind of get an idea what they look like. This is the like safe bet watch. I almost bought it, but I'm going for a different look and I'll explain why later. There's also the rose gold and silver link bracelet. It's similar to this. The body is not gold like this one is. There's a lot of gold trim and like a gold bar going down right where this is, but the rest of the watch is silver with a silver and rose gold band. Then you've got the only blue option, which is the silver and blue with a link bracelet. It's the CB0160-51L. Also another safe bet watch. So, you know, it really goes down to your preference on link bracelets versus leather bands. I'm more of a leather band guy. I do want to get a link bracelet just to compare it. That's the one part of the review that will be lacking is the rose gold and silver and the silver and blue options that have that link bracelet. I'm not going to really be able to comment too much on that. They are stainless steel, so I would imagine they're going to be much heavier watches than the model I've got and the black and silver one. All right, so let's get into size comparisons. This is our little holder, but we'll take it out just so we can kind of see what we're dealing with. I've got a Citizen BDM8180. This is a uh, classic watch. It's got over 2,000 reviews on Amazon. It's about 90 bucks. It's a quartz movement. Oh man, they're in sync. Uh, more on that later. The size of this guy is pretty small. It's like a, I think it's a 37 millimeter. I guess we can figure that out pretty quick. Yeah, 37 millimeter where the 016808 is a 42 millimeter. Uh, do it in the right spot here. I've got tape on there. So yeah, 42 millimeter. Uh, we'll just do lug to lug actually to get them. While we're at it, we're looking at about 59, or 49 rather. <laughs> Thickness on this watch is actually pretty good. Let me get that for you. It's one of the nice things about quartz. About 11 millimeters. Ten and a half, probably, with this tape. Don't want to mark it up. And one other thing I want to compare it to, I think this is really important in the watch age. You know, you've got your little 8180 here. You've got the Citizen. But I've also got the Apple Watch. So this is a 42 millimeter. They're very similar in size on your wrist. Thickness, however, is kind of unique. At first glance, they look pretty much the same but you've got this big ceramic disc on the back, which does kind of protrude into your skin a little bit. So it actually ends up feeling more like a 13 millimeter thickness, where if I don't get that ceramic part, it'd be roughly the same thickness as our Citizen here. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I <clears throat> love the Apple Watch, obviously I have one, and it's very useful, but there's a lot of advantages of a traditional watch, especially this one, which I guess isn't traditional. There's actually not that many watches that have the features of this, and we'll talk about that. But size-wise, I think that runs the gambit. One thing I do want to do as well is just the weight factor. So again, I, I don't have the exact 
one here. We've got a link bracelet. We're, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But if we get it onto there, about 3.3 ounces, not bad. It's considering the number of features you get and just the quality of it, it's not bad at all. This little 8180 is a featherweight though. <laughs> so if you're looking for something super duper lightweight, I definitely have other recommendations, but compared to most big watches, the 016808 is it's upside down is right in the middle. I think it's very good. If you're to add up the number of features divided by the ounces, I think this is an excellent option. So let's get right into it. We're gonna be talking about the dent here. We're gonna to try to find a dent in this piece of metal. The dent is the decent, the excellent, the negative, and the terrible of this citizen's watch. Citizen watch here. So to start off with the decent is the size. So I, I have a seven and a half wrist, you can count by counting the number of hairs, I guess, which is like medium to medium large in the wrist category. And this watch fits me perfectly. Maybe I'll throw it on real quick. It's one of the things that when you're shopping for a watch online, you don't always get the option to see what it looks like on your wrist. But as far as like the distance, it sits comfortably on my hand and doesn't rise up too much doesn't poke me too much at all. I mean, this is like the perfect size for me. So keep that in mind if you've got small wrist, big wrist. I'm a average dude, I would say. The next thing I like is this leather clasp. So this is a stainless steel clasp. You can see they've done some jeweling here on the inside of it. Nice touch as it adds some class to it. Matches my, uh, my busker. <laughs> so this this is uh, really easy to do. I thought I was getting ready because I, I had no idea what was going on here, but I was ready to like poke that pin in to adjust the size. And then I was like, there must be a quicker way. And sure enough, it opens like a little lid and you can slide it to whatever peg you want. The ease at, at doing this is pretty quick and easy. If you need to adjust it, you can. I will say this is kind of skipping ahead a little bit. I wish there was more options here or a quick adjust these holes these pegs it is the only way you can adjust the fit of the watch so i'm kind of lucking out here because this particular notch right here for me is perfect but if i was in between let's say this third and second to last um, point here it would probably be really frustrating because i wouldn't have the ability to fine tune that so i've analyzed this clasp up and down and i don't i pretty sure there's no other way to fine tune it other than just the holes on the band. So keep that in mind. It's kind of luck of the draw as far as where your size ends up being. But overall, I love the design. I thought looking at pictures that the clasp would, would kind of gouge into me a, a little bit. It doesn't at all. It feels great, super duper comfortable. I'm very, very pleased with that. I, I like the Citizen little thing here. I've, I've not had this watch long and I've already got some scratches on there. So dust diving is gonna mark this up. Not only is it gonna mark it up, but it's gonna mark it up very quickly. So keep that in mind. Overall, I think, you know, once the scratches are even and it's basically got a brushed finish, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but just another thing to keep in mind. The just raw flashiness of this watch it's more, it's more to do with my choice than, you know, if I get the silver one, it's not gonna show up near as bad as on the gold one, I don't, I don't feel like, but just another thing to consider. All right, so leather strap's awesome. I like it with a couple quibbles, but otherwise pretty good. I like the crown position and just how it doesn't protrude too much. And then you've got the, the crown guards and I especially like this button. This is your A button. There's a B button right here for setting some things on the watch. But the end result is that it, it really helps to just kind of curve you up and over on that notch. I am really pleased with just the general shape of the buttons. I really don't like, you know, giant humongous buttons on the side. They just snag on everything. And this is pretty low profile. It doesn't come up too high, you know, it's pretty low. So as far as like things coming up and around this way, 
you're pretty safe. And then this way, I feel like it's two directions that something's gonna snag on. So I like that, that's good, it's decent. The other thing I like, and it doesn't show on the actual watch face, but this is a water resistance for to 100 meters, which is excellent. I think that's pretty much anybody needs for like a non-diver person. You can scuba dive with it, take a shower with it. Obviously this has a leather band, so you're probably not gonna wanna get it wet for that purpose, but if you're considering one of the link bracelet options, I wouldn't worry about the water resistance. I think that's more than more than adequate considering the size of the watch, I think is excellent. We don't have to go too crazy on the water resistance beyond the 100 meters anyway, so that's good. Next, this is Sapphire Crystal. And you know, on really nice watches, you're always gonna expect Sapphire Crystal. And this is a very nice watch. Considering the price point, this is really ambiguous as to whether you can expect to get Sapphire Crystal on this price of a watch, which we're gonna mention later. So I can tell you I love the fact that this is Sapphire. It's not raised, it's totally flat. There's not really any kind of shimmer or gleam as far as like a tint to it. I really like the visibility of it. The hands are bent. It's really hard to notice at first, but they are bent, so like it can catch in the light. Even though, you know, you've got bl that back, black background, I, I found this watch to be extremely legible. And so with that kind of very well done sapphire crystal, not much gets in the way. Like if you have this, even where it's a huge glare, I'm still able to read it quite well. So haven't had a problem with that at all. Really pleased. The really cool thing here, and you're gonna notice all these like, okay, radio, no, all these like little indicators. This watch checks with the atomic signal sent out. There's places all over the world. In America, there's one in Denver. And so this automatically sets the time every night at 2 a.m. You can obviously force it to check the time when you get the watch, but you can always check if you click the button, it'll tell you if it can get the signal. It's saying I can't get it right here, and then I take one step out my door uh, or get just closer to my window. I'm surrounded by electronics, so I'm surprised I can't pick it up right now. But I just set this 10 feet away from where I'm at right now. It was not a problem. The system as to which to set the time is very easy. This is your B, uh, A button right here. You just click and hold it for over two seconds. Then it goes to the RX signal. And then you just wanna make sure you're in a spot where you think it's gonna get good signal. And it takes between two and 15 minutes to make sure it's getting the correct signal and update the time. For me, it took about 10 minutes. And then afterwards, I had set my, you know, two weeks ago, I had set my BD8180 to the time.gov website time, which is like compensated for lag on the internet. This has stayed perfectly in time since then, and as soon as this watch was done being set, they are perfectly in sync, which is fantastic. I think that's really, really awesome. Super easy, I did not have to set this time. So, once you set the radio signal, once you force it to check the radio signal, then this particular movement, it can all automatically figure out if it's daylight savings time or not, but if you're going to a place like I live in California and I've got family in Arizona, Arizona does not partake in the daylight savings. So if I go there, I can quickly just move the, the digital crown here out, not the digital crown, ooh, Apple Watch, ooh, just the crown. Move it out to position two, so one click, two click, and then I can, I can change that daylight savings on or off if I need to. Right now it's on, pretty soon we're gonna fall back, but. For now, it needs to be on. Super easy. So you've got the quick ability to turn that on and off. Most of the time, I'm never gonna need to mess with that because this, this movement keeps that in mind. But again, if you're going to locations, that, that's handy to have. Now, you'll notice around the edge here, you've got all these cities. This is not for decoration. These are the different time zones, all 20, 25, uh, 24 time zones. 
So when you move the crown out to the first position, it's going to automatically put you on your current time zone. So I'm set to the Los Angeles one. I'm in San Diego. And so if I'm traveling somewhere, if I want to go to, you know, Tokyo, let's say, it's as simple as moving it there and punching it in. Now our hand moves directly to where it needs to be. Really, 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 really smooth. So if you're somebody that likes to travel, go to places, it's even moving the day correctly, uh, that's awesome. So we are going to move that back. Los Angeles, boom. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. And notice it's keeping perfect time all the while. Rolling that day back. It's August 30th. Next point. This is that this is it's in my decent, should be in the excellent, but there's a didn't want to put everything in the in the excellent section. Sound like a shill. But this is a perpetual calendar. So not only does it automatically know the day, but if you go, you know, if you're in February where there's a few, uh, few days in the month and it goes to, you know, what would be 29th and it's not the leap year, it'll skip right over it just like it's supposed to. So this has already been set to the current leap year. 2018 is two years after a leap year and that's all it needs to know. So for the rest of this watch's life, it's going to have the correct date in the date window, which is awesome. That's really, really cool. I'd never have to worry about that, never have to actually set the time on, on the watch, never have to mess with, you know, changing the time manually for the daylight savings. These are all excellent features. It's basically like idiot proof. I, I, I'm, I'm an idiot and I cannot fool <laughs> this watch. It's, it's, it's too smart. So that's cool. The battery reserve. So <clears throat> you see here, if you're somebody that is familiar with citizen eco drive is what they call their solar power system so this i'm i'm putting in the excellent we're officially moving out of decent and we're going to excellent because having a solar powered system is great and they have them on cheaper watches like the bd 8180 this is solar powered as well it's got a day and date but it's not perpetual. So once a month, I have to fiddle with the date, unless I get lucky, it's one of the days, months that I don't have to do that. It doesn't have a perpetual calendar like this does. This is checking every night at 2 a.m. to update that, that time. So if there is any fluctuation in plus or minus on the seconds, this is always gonna be up to date. Now, all these things, all these little pieces of a technology are you know, gonna need energy, gonna need power. And so having something that's solar powered still has all these features is really top notch. So the way it works is if you're using your watch, it's getting some light, you know, just from like being in your work environment, your home environment with the lights on, it's gonna, it's gonna be able to maintain for the most part. But maybe you never see the light of day or, you know, you're on one of the poles and it's like dark all the time. The battery will eventually drain but the reserve battery if you weren't getting any light at all is about six months of like just normal use however if you go seven days in a row without it getting any light at all so like you pack it away like it's pitch dark after seven days of that it figures it out it turns the second hand and the minute hand off it's still keeping track of time and then it can go in this power reserve mode for two years now, comparing this some, to something like the Casio Oceanus that Nick Shabazz is famous for reviewing and being a proponent of, that actually has a three-year power reserve when it goes into that mode. So it's not quite as good as the, the Casio Oceanus, but the difference between two and three years is pretty minimal when all it takes is once you take it out of the box, you put it in the sunlight for about an hour, it'll come back to life, you charge it for five hours in direct sunlight, and it, it'll be fully charged to do another six months of normal use with low light or no light, and it goes into that power reserve mode for two years. So it, it's really easy to you know, get this watch. Maybe you're not somebody that wears the watch all the time. You know, If you're a business person, you feel like when you're actually at work or you're traveling, you need something, but most of the time, your time off or the weekends, you don't feel like you need a watch. This is gonna be ready to go for you whenever you need it. It's not gonna be like the automatic mechanical watches that you have to you know wear 
pretty regularly because they only have a 40 hour reserve time. This is just the easiest to use watch. And so given how it looks, all the features it has, you can just use this until it breaks basically as far as you know, not having to replace batteries, not having to worry about winding the watch. It's always got gonna have perfect time. There's a lot of excellent things here. So we've talked about accuracy. We've talked about how it's idiot proof. We've talked about how it has the power save mode. If you are packing it away, you don't have to worry about it for a couple years. And even then you stick in the sunlight and you're ready to go within a couple hours. The last thing I want to talk about in the excellent is the price. So this watch retail, if you go to Citizen's website, is about $500. That's not like the actual going rate of this watch. I bought this brand new on Amazon from a watch place in New York. Everything's on the up and up. It was $284 for a watch of this caliber with these features, I think is one of the best values on the market. I, I think this really bumps it up. I think maybe the Oceanus beats it. It has, you know, it, Oceanus has a titanium frame. Maybe that's your thing. It's got all the same features for the most part, slightly better power reserve, but basically the exact same features as far as perpetual calendar, the radio checking, all, all the kind of bells and whistles that go along with this. But this is 60% the cost. You don't have to mess with trying to import the Casio Oceanus. These are pretty rel readily available for three hundred bucks. Where the Oceanus is more like five hundred dollars. Maybe you can get an Oceanus for cheap, but God only knows if you can find one of these in good condition used. I think it's going to be one of the best deals around. So that is kind of the cherry on the cake for this watch for me. Now I don't want to ignore the things that are are negative or terrible. So before we get excited and go running out to purchase your favorite one of the colors. We do want to talk about a couple things to make sure that this is still the watch for you. So on the negative, this might vary from model from watch to watch. Uh, the wa second hand here, I'm going to let it kind of cruise around. You notice it's not perfectly right. See on the left hand, all these indices, it's pretty well lined up. But on this side of the watch, I've noticed it's missing the mark. It's it's like 20% of a second too far forward. This bothers a lot of people sometimes, you know, if you're paying $6,000 for a watch, that better be perfect. I'm gonna give it a pass on this watch. This is not a, a deal breaker for me personally, given the features and just how much this watch costs and what it does for me, that this does not bother me in the slightest at all, especially when I know that what I am seeing is the correct time and I never have to worry or second hand or second guess the time. You know, if you have a high end automatic watch and it's hitting those indices correctly, you can feel good about yourself. But honestly, you're losing more, more than likely five to 15 seconds a day. So if you factor that in, it's really far away from the correct indice. <laughs> that, that, that's my logic and I'm sticking to it. So. Uh, still a negative. The other thing is the polished finishes. I already kind of mentioned this on the class, but this is going to, I think, scratch up pretty badly. I think it's going to look worse on the gold one. So far, I'm doing okay. It's not an issue. And again, given the value of this watch, it's not going to bother me if I do have a few you know, scratches here and there. But if you're worried about it, I think you you know can get a different color combination and get one, either the blue or the the black one and you probably won't have these issues. So keep that in mind. And then just the overall fit and finish. I, I don't have too much to complain about outside of it not hitting the indices perfectly. There's this B button right here is silver instead of gold. I don't know if you know that's just a, a practicality thing that if they have those be the same colors that the paint's gonna come off or the, I, I don't know. You know, maybe there's a good reason why they don't do that, but when you have it on, it kind of clashes a little bit, that silver indice. So small, small thing. Same thing over here in the clasp. You've got this, you know, nice gold clasp right next to the this stainless steel uh, release button. That release button does protrude a little bit, uh, which is another negative thing. I, I mean, it's kind of negative. You kind of want it to protrude so you can easily 
you know, clip that clasp off. Again, I I don't care. These aren't things that I'm going to be worried too much about. I think if this was gold, it'd probably show up scratches even worse again. So I don't know. I everything makes sense as to why they colored it this way, but you know, it's I kind of chose my own po poison in this regard. There's other watch model, other watches that are this exact thing with different color combinations. So that's more of my personal mistake than the watch's mistake. I knew what I was getting into. Uh, last thing, last thing, and this this could be a deal breaker for some of you. I, I think it's a small percentage of you that are gonna care this much about it, but you'll notice one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the loom. So I'm gonna charge it up here off screen. The loom is pretty sleepy. Um, it's only on the hour and the minute hand, it's not on the second hand at all. And there's nothing else on the display as far as loom goes and it fades pretty quickly. So I put it in the dark for like a few hours in my bathroom and then I just went and checked it to see if I could still see it, let my eyes adjust a little bit. I could see it. It's nothing, nothing compared to my BD8180. Something like this, where every single hour is loomed, you can see this watch throughout the entire night. So I'm not somebody that cares about wearing my watch at night and being able to tell the time. I just don't find it comfortable to do. I don't need it. I have an alarm clock that is pretty low key and doesn't bother me at night. <sighs> I'm not outside in the night very often in general outside of just wearing my watch to bed so for me this literally has no bearing whatsoever it could have no loom at all and i wouldn't care because of all the features and value that this watch gives me if you care a lot about loom this watch is going to bother you it's not non-existent you can see it it's going to be hard to tell what the time actually is you know because the orientation of it you know might throw you off a little bit because you don't have any other indicator of like what direction the watch is facing but i need to mention it so for a lot of people this is the terrible and there's only one thing that is terrible about that watch about this watch and it's the loom for me it's more uh, as just a negative something i note i i'm not gonna not mention it i think it's even though it's not important to me i think it could be important to you guys so Keep that in mind. All right, so what's the conclusion ultimately of the Citizen watch? I honestly, I like this watch so much, I'm considering getting another one. This is insanity, but I kind of, I at least want to experience the link bracelet. I've never been a, a huge fan of the link bracelets. I really do like leather. I, I got this color combination so it matches the Elijah Isham Pleroma knife that I'm going to get my hands on eventually as soon as that sucker comes out. I think it's just super duper classy, the black and the gold, they'll match really, really well. So I was kind of booty blinded by this color scheme and just having it match my plur Pleroma, but I can also see the practicality and just more fashion options to have, you know, the blue and silver or the black and silver watches. So. I'm tempted to have one of the other ones, probably the blue and silver uh, with the link bracelet. But, you know, I, hopefully this is a review that is useful to you and gives you the confidence to pick up one of these new watches. They come out, they've came, came out in 2018. They're hot off the press. Not a lot of people know about them. I couldn't find a single review on this watch. Uh, and I really think it deserves to be highlighted and people know about it. Um, hopefully you don't hold the Citizen brand against it. I, I think this is an excellent watch for anybody who doesn't think the Loom is a death knell for it. So thanks for joining in guys and I would appreciate any feedback or any conversation on this watch. I, I want people to know about this. I, I want people to experience the coolness of this watch and what it can do for you. Anyway, have a good week and I'll see you guys next time.